Hello and welcome to another Hemlocks and Loon video. My name's Forrest and today I got a great video for you. It's tips and planning for a Sylvania wilderness trip. I've got a whole lot of information for you to cover on this video. I will be putting this video into chapters and you'll be able to access those uh, chapters down in the description of this video. Um, I do have a bunch of notes here that's so I can cover this information as best as possible and um, not leave anything out so I apologize if I'm looking down or if I sound like I'm reading but uh, I want to make sure you have the best information so that you can plan your best Sylvania trip. As you can see, we are snow covered, air has a chill to it, the lakes are frozen, and it's uh, early February, so now is a perfect time to start planning your Sylvania Wilderness trip. Let's start this out with a brief history of the Sylvania Wilderness. This area was originally inhabited by the Anishinaabe people. They are still in this area, they still use the, these lands to uh, hunt and gather and for their spiritual needs. As Europeans came to the area, first they came to explore, they also came as trappers to, to gather pelts uh, to sell back to Europe. And then after that, the loggers came and the loggers began to buy up the land to cut the trees um, and harvest them for, for lumber uh, primarily. One of the men that came to harvest the trees in this area was a lumberman from Wisconsin named Albert Johnson. Uh, he moved to the area in 1897 and he purchased 80 acres between um, Clark and Loon Lakes. Originally, like I said, he, was, he bought the land in order to harvest it, but after seeing it, seeing the mature trees, the white pines, the uh, red pines, the hemlock, he, he saw beauty in it and didn't want to destroy that by, by harvesting those trees. So he built himself a log cabin. It was a five bedroom cabin and he used it to uh, invite big people on vacation to come up here and to fish, hunt, gather wild berries, to uh, swim in the lakes, and just enjoy themselves. Wealthy friends of Johnson's, um, including lumbermen, came to the area and they decided to purchase land surrounding Johnson's land. And together they formed the Sylvania Club. And in 1906, they built a clubhouse and it was called Wildwood Lodge. That was in 1906. Later they built additional lodges, cabins, and caretakers cabins, and most of all of these were on Clark Lake. The largest of these buildings was known as Thompson Lodge. Um, it featured 16 rooms, 13 fireplaces, and an indoor tennis court. Sylvania Club lasted up until 1966 when the Forest Service purchased the land for $5,740,000 and it was open to the public in the spring of 1967. In September of 1967, uh, the First Lady, Lady Bird Johnson, came and had an official dedication ceremony and dedicated the land to all Americans. And then in 1987, more than 18,000 acres of Sylvania was designated by Congress as wilderness in the Michigan Wilderness Act of 1987. Uh, over the next several years, the Forest Service removed the remnants of the last existing buildings. They removed some of the campsites. They took down uh, some of the amenities such as outhouses, picnic tables, most of the signs so that they could manage the area uh, within the wilderness regulations. So let me give you a description of what Sylvania Wilderness is today. It is 18,327 acres. There are 34 named lakes within Sylvania. There are 50 designated campsites and 26 miles of trails. The Sylvania Recreation Area is attached or adjacent to the wilderness. It consists of an entrance station, a campground, um, several trailheads, a couple of boat launches, the uh, Clark Lake Beach, and the beach house, uh, which also has a meeting area and some restrooms and changing areas and showers. People refer to Sylvania as a mini boundary waters. I don't think that's a fair comparison at all. I think what is comparable is the fact that they are both wilderness, they um, allow canoeing and hiking, they have portages, they have designated campsites with fire rings and latrines. And that's about where the comparison ends. Sylvania is 159th, so almost a 60th of the size. Um, Sylvania has reservable campsites. 
So during the busy season, you can reserve your campsite ahead of time. It has por the portages in Sylvania, they're generally flat and um, they are short. Okay, in this section, I'm gonna cover rules and regulations. I think it's a good idea to um, keep you out of trouble. No one wants to have their uh, vacation ruined by a ticket or um, causing a wildfire or doing damage. So I think it's best that we cover some rules and regulations. Camping, as I already mentioned, it's, per it's permitted only at designated sites and you need a permit, and those permits are available for the time period between May 15th and September 30th. They are reservable online, and I'll talk more about that later in this video. And camps are also identified by in-ground uh, Forest Service fire rings, and they all also have a latrine. If you approach any of these campsites from the water, they each have a post on shore, which has the name of the campsite on it. Campfires are only permitted in U.S. Forest Service fire rings. Uh, you want to make sure that you put your fires out cold to the touch, both at night and any time you leave the campsite. Additionally, camp, camp stoves are allowed and recommended for use uh, for cooking. You can cook on fire, um, but the other thing is, is you know, if you, you're deciding to go fishing for the day or hiking or just out for a day trip um, from your campsite, make sure you bring a stove if you're looking to cook lunch because um, Wildfires have been an issue in Sylvania, although none of them have gotten very large. People do tend to start fires from year to year. In 2021, there were four. Uh, three of those fires were at, um, n not at campsites. They were on shores uh, away from campsites where people had started a fire and left it and it later spread. Um, and then one fire was in a campsite and it was from somebody who did not extinguish their campfire when they left. We don't want to see that happen and we don't want you to get in trouble for doing that so make sure you put your fires out. Firewood, um, you can only collect dead and down uh, firewood so no standing dead trees, no live trees um, and because of the way the campsites are that may mean you need to travel some distance to find that dead and down stuff. If you want to join campfire there's work that comes with that and part of that's collecting the firewood and so let's do that in a, in a matter that's not going to get you in trouble. Group size, a maximum of six people is allowed in uh, any one campsite at any one time. Um, the maximum number of people allowed uh, in a group in the wilderness is 10. Even though there are, like I said, campsites, sister sites, two you know, pairs of sites throughout the wilderness, I would always suggest sticking at that six level and not going higher because even if you have a group of 10 and you get those two sites next to each other, you're not supposed to have more than six people in one single site at a time. So it's not like you can get those two sites and then make dinner at one site and hang out around a campfire at another because you'll be over that number of six. Containers. You want to make sure that you carry your food and drinks in reusable plastic containers. Um, you shouldn't be using metal or glass food uh, or beverage containers, including deposit bottles, cans, and styrofoam. The, there, there are a couple exceptions to this, so like your, your metal fuel bottle for your stove, those are allowed. Um, you know, uh, insect repellent comes in metal cans, you can bring those. Let's see, motorized and mechanized. So motorized, mechanized, or gas-powered vehicles, including motors, snowmobiles, portage wheels, and bicycles, none of those are allowed in the wilderness. Drones. So if you, you're gonna bring a drone on your trip, don't, don't bring it into the wilderness with you. It's not allowed in the wilderness. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's not a good idea. You can get a ticket. Um, some exceptions, wheelchairs are allowed for accessibility in the wilderness. So that's one, one way you can have wheels in the wilderness. Um, the other exception is folks that live or have businesses on uh, Crooked Lake um, are allowed to use motor, motorized boats or motor boats both inside and outside the wilderness. So if you are traveling on or camping on Crooked Lake, um, you will see motor boats on that lake. Dogs. Um, dogs uh, are allowed in the wilderness, um, but they must be under human control at all time and they must be on a leash of no, no longer than six feet. So no taking your dog off leash and allowing them to run around. 
Washing and bathing, you are allowed to wash and bathe. If you do, especially if you're using soap, you wanna make sure you're at least 150 feet from any shoreline or wetland. That way it will help protect an environment. The ground will help um, filter those items out before they make it back into those, those water bodies. Islands, you can't land on any of the islands from ice off until July 15th. That is to protect the nesting loons. If you want to explore the islands while you're in Sylvania, you'll have to come sometime after July 15th to do that. Metal detecting is prohibited in the wilderness, so don't be doing that. Uh, digging and trenching is not allowed either. Don't trench uh, around your tents. Don't dig holes. Fishing, there are special um, fishing regulations that apply in Sylvania. I'll talk a little bit about more about that later, but um, you can only use artificial lures with barbless hooks and no live or preserved bait. Day use fee, there is a day use fee um, for using the Sylvania Recreation Area. That fee doesn't specifically apply to the wilderness, but if you're gonna go into the wilderness on a day trip and you're gonna go in through the uh, Sylvania Recreation Area, so that's at Crooked Lake, um, Clark Lake, um, Clark Lake Beach House, Thompson Trailhead, anything where you go past that that entrance station and you'll be parking in that area that does require a day use fee and that day use fee is five dollars a day or you can get a, a pass for thirty dollars um, however if you are going into the wilderness for overnight or longer and basically you're paying for camping or if you're paying for camping in the recreation area you do not need that day use fee Again, the day use fee is only required from May 15th through September 30th. If you're outside that uh, time timeline, you can park and use the day use area without paying a fee. There are other areas outside the recreation area where you can access the wilderness. There's several trailheads. Um, and if you park there for the day, you do not have to pay the day use fee. It's only within the recreation area. And then lastly, wilderness permits. Um, a free wilderness permit is required to travel in the wilderness, again, from May 15th to, through September 30th. Although it's not required outside that time, they are still there and available. And I would say, you know, if you're going in, um, you should probably fill one out. It should, it'll help if there's an incident, an accident, you get lost. It'll just provide the Forest Service and first responders with information uh, that may help them find you. Okay, maps. Um, there's both paper and uh, digital versions of maps that you can use for the Sylvania Wilderness. A free paper map is available at the entrance station or at the Visitors Information Center in Waters Meet. And then the Forest Service also has a fairly nice waterproof map for sale. Um, I believe it's 14 bucks uh, currently, and it's available again at the Waters Meet Visitor Center, at the Forest Service office, or at, um, at the uh, entrance station when it is open. There's also a company called Mapping Specialists uh, that makes a map. It is available both digital and in paper versions as well. I know Sylvania Outfitters carries it. At this time, I think it's approximately $7. Um, if you're using digital maps, I tend to use an app called Avenza. Um, I will cover Avenza a little bit more later in this video, but um, it's a digital offline mapping app that you can download your maps ahead of time, and if you're outside of service area, it still works. Both of those maps are available on that. The Forest Service map is $4.99, and the Mapping Specialist map is $3.99. You can also download um, USGS Topo maps, and those are free. So I'd like to have a couple of different map styles, and I have um, at least two of those maps on my Venza uh, app at all times when I'm out in the backcountry. For planning purposes, when I'm doing planning my trips like this, I tend to use Google Earth a lot, and you can download um, data with uh, information for uh, Sylvania Wilderness from a, a website called Paddle Planner. Um, again, I'll, I'll touch more on Paddle Planner in my uh, tools and resources section a little bit later in this video. Campsites, so good things and bad things about campsites. Obviously, the further away you can get from the um, where you enter into the wilderness, the better and less used the campsites are going to be. Personally, I try to stay away from the from the double sites, just because a lot of sites are close enough that you can see and hear the people in the site adjacent to you. So, um, so like Ash One and Ash Two, they're both very close together. Like I said, you can see and hear people that are in the 
the adjacent site. There are eight sites that are individual, 42 sites that are all double sites. I tend to go for those eight sites. And all the sites sit on the lake shores, and a few of the sites have uh, trails that run along them. And again, I'll cover that a little bit more in the next section. So hiking and backpacking. As I said before, there's 26 miles of trails within Sylvania. A lot of those trails are old roadbeds, meaning they're fairly wide, they're flat. If you're looking to backpack, there are 18 campsites that are located right off the trail. There's an additional four sites that are a very short bushwhack from the trail that wouldn't take a whole lot to get to. This also means that if you're canoeing, you have easy access to the trails from, from those specific sites. I think if you, you look at the paddle planner or uh, download the Google Earth uh, info, those sites will become very obvious. Um, same with just looking at the maps. I think at this point, I'm gonna move inside and that way I can share some things on the computer with you and make this a little bit easier uh, for you to see visually. Okay, first I thought I'd talk about fishing. Let me start with the caveat that I am not much of a fisherman. When I do fish, I generally am fishing for food and not for sport. So there's going to be a lot left to be desired uh, in this portion. You can check out YouTube. There are other folks out there who have done videos about fishing in Sylvania. Sylvania is a good bass fishery. So there's a lot of people that enjoy going to, to Sylvania for bass fishing. Let's talk about the regulations um, within Sylvania wilderness area. Size limits, lake trout, not less than 30 inches. Walleye, not less than 20 inches. Northern pike, not less than 30 inches. And all other species have no size limit unless regulated. Daily possession limits. Northern pike, walleye, lake trout are no more than one fish of any of these species. All other species are 10 singly or in combination of these species unless otherwise regulated. And here's the big one. Largemouth and smallmouth bass must be returned immediately to the water without injury. Possession of any bass, regardless of where taken, is prohibited on the special provisions lakes in Sylvania area. I did mention earlier about method of take. You can only do uh, hook and line fishing only. Only artificial lures with barbless hooks may be used for fishing. And then live bait, dead or preserved bait, organic or processed food or scented material may not be used or possessed at any time on the waters or shores of special provision Sylvania lakes. Here is a list of the special provision lakes, which is a majority of the lakes within the Sylvania wilderness. Crooked Lake is is not one of these lakes. It is covered under the regular state of Michigan fishing regulations. In this section, I'm going to talk about tools and resources. And most of these are going to be uh, websites that you can use to gain either additional information or tools you can do use to help improve the planning of your trip. The first website I'm going to take you to is the Ottawa National Forest Sylvania Wilderness Backcountry Camping website. As you can see at the top of this website there's a video. It's very informative and if you've ever been to Sylvania in the past before pre-COVID you will have seen this video because they show it to everybody that's going into the wilderness at the entrance station at the Sylvania Recreation Area. Um, it's filled with a lot of good information and a lot of the information I previously shared with you in this video. Again with the information below is some of the same information I shared with you but it's always a good place to go to. You can come back and check it. They do have maps here that you can take a look at. Any updates um, even though we're into 2023 they still have the 20 22 update here, but I'm sure that will change uh, over the next couple of weeks to months. But it's got information about reservations, fees, permit info, open season, restrictions, closest towns, where the restrooms are. There's even an interactive map down here. And then there's also some information about fishing, hiking, nature view viewing, picnicking, water activities, and winter sports. Reservations. You do your reservations for your campsites uh, through recreation.gov. Um, recreation.gov does reservations for all sorts of camping, day use, permits, tickets, things you need for forest service, park service, BLM, and others. So what you're going to want to do here is go up to the search uh, bar, type in Sylvania, and a couple of things with, related to Sylvania will come up. There's Sylvania Clark Lake Campground. This is the regular old campground that you will find in the Sylvania Recreation Area. 
if you are looking for backcountry wilderness camping sites, you need to go to the Sylvania Wilderness Backcountry Camping one and click on that. Once you click on the Sylvania Wilderness Backcountry Camping, it'll take you to this site right here. There'll be a list of campsites on the far left over here, and then their availability over here. FF is first come first serve as you can see here here's May 15th so these first uh, first two days are before that date so all sites are first come first serve in the off season and then they'll show an A for available and R for reserved some of these sites like Bear 2 you see these NRs here non-reservable in the past these were first come first serve um, day of sites you had to go to the entrance station on, on the day you arrived to reserve any of these sites for camping. With COVID, they had these opening up two weeks prior to the date, and you could reserve them at that time. I am unsure at this time how that's going to work this year. You also have a map over here that you can zoom in and zoom out of that shows the wilderness and where the sites are. If we click on one of these, let's just click on Bobcat, and this takes you to the site page. It'll show you the, again, wh where they're available when they aren't. And there is usually a couple of photos of the site. They're not great photos, and they're not, you know, there's like, what, three, three uh, pictures here of the site, but um, give you an idea. And then you can scroll down. Again, there's a close-up map of it. And then down towards the bottom are guest reviews. Bobcat has 10 review, 10 five-star reviews. Um, a little bit more information about booking on recreation.gov. The sites cost $15 a night between May 15th and September 30th. They are first come, first serve, and free outside of that timeline. And additional to that $15 uh, per night, you will also pay an $8 processing fee uh, through recreation.gov that will be added on top of your camping fee. Okay, the next website I'm going to talk about here is Paddle Planner. This has both tools and resources to help you out. This was mainly kind of set up for the Boundary Waters and Quatico area, but it does have plenty of information for other areas, including Sylvania. So come down here and click on Build a Route, go to Other Areas, click on Sylvania, and I'll pull up the map of Sylvania. Um, one thing I would tell you to do ahead of time is come up to the top here and click on settings. And I believe it's route builder settings. Yes. Um, they have imperial and metric um, speed of paddlers. So beginners, average, veteran, or custom. Portage trips. Are you going to be doing single portage, double portage, triple, or custom? You want to minimize time. And paddle uh route types, paddle portage only, do not use hiking trails. Um, this, These will not be set up like this. I believe they're in metric to begin with, and I believe all routes is um, selected down here. So you have to go through these and then just hit save settings as default. And then you can come out of there and you can zoom in. One of the nice things you can do with this, sorry for it zooming in and out there, is let's say you're putting in at Clark Lake at the boat launch which is right here and you can go in and click right here and then zoom out and let's say you're staying at Eagle 2 campsite on Loon Lake Whoop. again sorry about that So this is Eagle 2 right here, and you click right here. And now it's going to show you a bunch of information. So it's going to show your water route. You got one portage at 74 rods through there and to your, uh, to your campsite. Total distance is 4.3 miles. It's 3.6 miles of total canoeing. 0 0.07 miles of portaging and it should take you one hour and 42 minutes time uh, to get there. Now this is on the free version of Paddle Planner which only allows you to do one day at a time. 
So should you be planning a trip where you're going to be staying at several campsites, this tool will only let you do one section at a time. You'll have to look into uh, what their plans are on Paddle Planner, but you could purchase one of their plans and it'll allow you to do multiple multi-day trips. But that's a good tool to know and it helps you with figuring out times and distance traveled and all that uh, to get to your campsite. Okay, the next thing I want to show you on the Paddle Planner website is if you go to Menu and go to Resources and then go to Locations. You have several other databases here, but the main one I want you to take a look at is Campsites. And then you can click on Sylvania. And then here is their database of uh, ratings for campsites. As you can see, not every single campsite has had a rating. Uh, Ash 1, for example, has, has no rating and has no photos. So talking about the photos that they had on the recreation.gov site, um, you can find additional photos here. So we'll just take a quick look at Ash 2. So over here, it'll show you where the campsite is. You can even zoom in on it. So that's where Ash 2 is. You can go to ratings. There's two ratings here for Ash 2. Come back here to photos, and you can see there's additional photos of the campsite here. Um, there's everything from the landing. So looks like it's way zoomed in, but there's the landing. I mentioned before about every site having a post with its name on it. There's the post right there. So, but you can click around on these. And uh, next thing I'm going to have you do is also go to resources. And then there's this downloads. They have two different types of downloads here. So they have KMZ files, which are Google Earth files. Sylvania Wilderness is right here along with all these others. And then if you use a GPS, there is also um, Sylvania campsites and Sylvania portage landing points that you can download into your GPS. I use Google Earth quite a bit for planning trips. And so I've pulled this data set and I have it in Google Earth and I'll show you that here in just a minute. So here we are in Google Earth. Uh, this is actually Google Earth Pro that I'm using, but you can see this, the boundary of, the, of Sylvania, the orange is the trails, the yellow is the portages, and the brown circles are the campsites. These two hikers at the trailheads here, there is one trailhead right here that's missing, and then the balloons here are the entry locations uh, for going into Sylvania. The big thing I wanted to show you, this is if you download the Google Earth file from Paddle Planner, this is what you'll get. And this is what I use for planning. There are two things that I would like to point out here. There are two portages that are incorrect on all of the maps and including in this data. I have one of them fixed here. So if we zoom into here, this is Crooked Lake, this is High Lake, and this is Cure Lake. On all the maps, this is what shows as the portage. The actual portage location is past this little island here, and in this little cove, that's the actual portage between High and Cure. And then the other one is between Loon and um, Deer Island Lake. This is, this pink line here is the portage as it shows up on all the maps. I do not have the actual portage mapped on here. I hope to do that sometime this summer. But the, I believe it's somewhere right in here is where the portage is on the on Loon Lake side. It comes in, it follows part of this portage for a while and then splits off and comes out right here. So just be aware on all the maps those two portage locations are incorrect. And I'll mention it one more time uh, when we get to the tips section at the end of this video. But that's Google Earth. I could make an hour long video just on planning and how I do it in Google Earth and where I pulled all the information from. But this is what I use mainly for looking at and for planning trips. Okay, the next website and tool that I'd like to talk about is Avenza Maps. This is their website. I've spoken about this a little earlier in the video. Avenza is a 
app for your phone that allows you to take maps offline. It's a great resource. It's got a ton of tools with it. Again, this is another one that I could make an hour long video about it, just this app, but it's the app I use and it's got a store. You can also download your own georeference PDFs to it. Here's just kind of a look at some of the screenshots that they have on their website. Here's some of the tools. They have compass. You can pull up Latin long. You can measure things with this. You can GPS a track, make points, and move those points from one map to another. Up here, you can search for maps. And if you put in Sylvania, you can see the Forest Service map I talked about earlier shows up in here, $4.99 and the mapping specialist map shows up in here for $3.99. And then if we go in on the area, you can zoom in on the area here in this map. Then you can hit search this area and other maps will come up, um, including some of the topo maps that cover the area. You can click on those and you can see those maps are free. It even shows you a preview of the maps. Um, it's a great website. You can also search for all these maps on the app itself when you have connectivity, but, um, and then download them, and then they're available there uh, for you to use offline. Okay, moving on to the next website. There is only one outfitter for Sylvania Wilderness Area. And that is Sylvania Outfitters, and they are located in Waters Meet, Michigan. Bob Zielinski is the owner of Sylvania Outfitters. He is very active in the area, very active in Sylvania all summer long. Quite a few people use his services, mostly for renting boats, but he does have quite a few services. He does have a store, so if you forgot some essentials, you can pick those up there equipment rentals, canoes and kayaks, and a bunch of different types of, of canoes. He's got Kevlar, he's got Royal X, he's got aluminum, he's got kayaks, he's got rowboats. His rates are all on here. And then he also does complete outfitting as well. If you think you're gonna need any of that stuff once you get there, you don't have a boat and you need to rent, uh, this is the place to go. His number's up here at the top. And then as with all these websites I've talked about so far today, they will all be linked down in the description so you'll be able to get back to them. Some additional websites to check out would include the Friends of Sylvania. Uh, additionally, there is a Facebook group for Sylvania. I'll link that down in the description. And then as always, if you're going into a wilderness area or spending time in the outdoors at all, you should learn and know the Leave No Trace principles. And I'll put a, a link down to the Leave No Trace website as well. Okay, this is the last section. In this section, I'm going to talk about tips or basically things to know to help improve your trip. First off, use the tools and resources I've talked about in this video. Like I said several times, there's links for all of them down in the description below. Go through, explore them, and find out what works best for you. If you want to get away from the people, get away from noise, the best thing is to stay off the entry lake. Stay off Crooked Lake and stay off Clark Lake. Go beyond those lakes. Go to Loon. Go to High. Go to Mountain. Just get beyond those entry lakes. A lot of people come into the wilderness and don't go beyond the entry lakes. Second of all, reserve the single sites over the double sites. That way you don't have neighbors, you don't have people you can potentially see, you don't have people that are potentially making noise right next to you. Critters. Okay, chipmunks. A lot of the campsites in Sylvania have chipmunks. Do your best to watch your food and to make sure it's stowed properly because the chipmunks will know the second you turn your back and they will go after any food they can get. Um, so it's always best to keep a clean camp. Bears. Sylvania Wilderness does have bears, although there are not tons of them and they haven't been much of a problem. It is still a good idea to mind your food, to make sure that you're hanging your food at night to keep it up off the ground and away from the bears and, and or to use bear resistant containers like such as a bear vault. If you're using a food barrel, remember those aren't bear resistant. I've heard people call them bear resistant containers before. They are not. They do need to be hung if you're using a bear barrel. Bugs. Okay, so it's the Northwoods in the summer. You're going to have to deal with bugs. We have mosquitoes. We have a bunch of different types of flies. There's ticks. It's just going to depend on year from year, how wet it is, a bunch of different factors play in it. But you are pretty much guaranteed to see bugs 
if bugs are usually an issue for you, make sure you bring bug repellent, head net, or maybe even a bug shelter. Okay, boat ramps and portages. Congestion can be an issue at these locations, so you want to make sure that when you get to a boat ramp and you're putting in for your trip or you're taking out, make sure you get all your gear out of your car, put to the side, your boats to the side, and get your car parked before you start thinking about getting in the water. Get all your gear split up, especially if you have multiple canoes or a larger group, and fill each canoe with what you need and those people, get them to back away from the shore, then fill the next and do the same. Because sometimes those boat ramps can be quite crowded. You don't want to be the group that's taking up the entire boat ramp. The same thing applies with the portages. Just make sure that you're aware of other people around you, people coming in, people coming out, and that you're minding your gear and getting it off to the side so that you're not getting in the way of other folks. And that brings me to the end of this video. I want to say thank you very much for watching. And if you made it to this point in the video, may you be happy to subscribe to my channel. Also, I have a Facebook page. Those will be linked down below in the description as well. You could also buy me a coffee and to help support the channel. Thanks for watching and I hope this video has helped you plan your next trip to Sylvania Wilderness.